All right, so today we're gonna to be looking at installing these Dometic S4 windows in my panel van. These have great reviews all over the industry and I'm very much looking forward to getting them in. Now these windows come in two parts, unlike bonded windows that normally just get stuck to the outside of the van. We've got an interior trim that includes the blind and fly net. So that's what will be on the inside of the van. And then we've got the actual window itself, which will sit on the outside. And you'll notice between the outer trim and the inner trim, there is a gap here of about 25 millimeters. And so these have been designed to fit a wall thickness of 25 millimeters, which is obviously not that of my 1.5 millimeter wall thickness of the panel van. So I need to make a frame to bulk these out to begin with. But instead of just making a frame that's 26 millimeters all the way round, I'm actually gonna make it slightly thicker so that I can then scribe the outside curvature of the van. This will mean that when the window is pressed into place, it's not gonna push the side panel of the van flat and cause any bubbling or dimpling or distortion, which is actually what happened with one of my roof lights and I fixed on the second one and it's much better. So let's go check the radius of the van and see what sort of of thickness frame we need to add. So to begin with, I've got a bit of wood with a straight edge and I've cut it to the same height as the window. Now I've drawn a little line on the wall here, which is where the bottom of the window is gonna be. So it's gonna be up here. We're gonna put a bit of wood against that, just touch it on the top. And then this gap in between is how many millimeters we need to add to the thickness of the frame. So then that way it'll be 25 millimeters thick here, 25 millimeters thick here, and it looks to be about two or three millimeters. So it's gonna be about 28 in the middle there. Now the van is only curved along its height, so I don't need to add any thickness to the frame on this bottom edge. It's just gonna be 25 down here, 28 here, and then we'll curve that so it meets the two 25 millimeter sections on the frame. Now keep in mind that these are the Dometic S4 windows. However, there is a new range called the S7, and these have a slight radius on the outside frame in order to match the curvature of the outside of the van. I didn't realize this until I purchased four of these windows, which are now outside the return window, but I've seen people have okay results with these. In fact, I'm not just gonna be relying on the built-in seal that's around the edge of this window. I'm also gonna be doing a thick bead of Sikaflex all the way around, which will fill out any of the small voids and you know, will also act as a nice adhesive as well. But I'll show you that later on. For now, let's build the frame. Once again, I'm constructing this using offcuts, so don't be put off by the fact I'm using big machines here. It's perfectly possible to buy pre-dimensioned timber that you can very easily shape by hand afterwards. The method that I plan on doing this is by using an electric planer. As for building the frame, you've got a few options. You could do half lap joints in the corners. You could use a screw. You could use a domino. You could use dowels. All sorts of options for joining two bits of timber together. I would recommend against using a simple butt joint, however, as relying primarily on glue for this kind of joint is just asking for trouble. All right, so you don't need to do this next step, but instead of trying to draw a perfect rectangle on a curved panel with very few reference surfaces, what I'm gonna do is make a template out of this spare bit of plywood that I ripped out of the internal skin of the van when I was cleaning it out. Now, from what it looks like, these outer walls actually taper in slightly. So whatever I measure at the top here needs to be slightly wider than that. Yeah, you see that little gap there? Yeah, so it looks to be about a two millimeter taper before it bottoms out on this seal. So that means whatever I measure on the top here needs to add two millimeters each side. So it looks to be eight, nine, three. So I'll add four to that, eight, nine, seven, and then maybe just give a millimeter extra just to be safe. So we'll call it eight, nine, eight. Of course, this window is designed to fit a 400 by 900 millimeter cutout, but if I can make those tolerances slightly smaller, then that's gonna really help to waterproof it all. Not to mention the fact that I'll be slightly filing the edges as well. So that should give it a bit of extra relief. So first, let's just verify that this is a good straight edge. Yep. So first we'll give a point at three, nine, eight. And we'll do three of these just to verify things. Now I'm not going to trust this board is square, so we'll give ourselves a new square mark here. And then we want to measure 898 from there. We'll do that top and bottom. And then just verify that with a square again. Looks good. And then we should be able to sanity check that by putting a frame on it and see that the lines match up with the inside edge. Spot on, the lines we've drawn here are a couple of millimeters larger. Now, unfortunately, the bench in which I would normally use the track saw is um, occupied. So I'm gonna have to use it over here. A track saw is kind of like a circular saw, but it's primarily made to run over a rail, which allows you to line it up with whatever lines you've got underneath and cut exactly to them. An alternative to this would be simply to go to a DIY store and get them to cut a template for you using their own machinery. Okay, so I've got a little mark here at one meter from the floor, which is where I want 
the bottom of the window trim to go. However, this frame slightly overhangs the internal lip, I guess. The amount it overhangs, having just measured it, is 25 millimeters. So if I want the frame to end on that line, I need to cut 25 millimeters above it. So it's gonna be sat somewhere around about there. So that's where the cutout will be. And then we'll have it overhang this side as well. So there's plenty of clearance before we hit this. The only annoying thing is gonna be these two supporting ribs. So I'm gonna cut them out. So obviously there's a big old risk here that I cut straight through the outside of the van. So what I'm gonna do when I do this is plant the back end of the angle grinder against my leg and then just slowly lean back like this. All right, here goes nothing. I'm sure this doesn't need to be said, but be very careful when doing this because it is definitely possible to cut through the side of the van. It was very helpful for me to have a cordless angle grinder for this as it made maneuvering it much easier, but just make sure you're using good quality cutting discs that aren't at risk of vibrating or blowing up or anything like that that's gonna put you off. You wanna be really focused when doing this because it could very easily go wrong. Once I'd removed the supporting ribs, which by the way are there primarily to stop these panels vibrating, I had to remove the adhesive, which I actually found was very easy to do using my trim tool. Nice. All right, so 25 millimeters above is there. And then let's see if I can magnetize this in place. No. <laughs> Damn, I thought I was onto something there. Okay, so I've drawn a center line down this panel, which is halfway between these two ribs. Obviously there's all sorts of geometry going on with these walls and those were the best fixed points I could find. I've also drawn two center points on my panel. So I'm gonna put the bottom one up to the line where I know the cutout's gonna start. The top one's gonna go there. However, measuring this, the window is still out of square. That's 61, that is 56. So instead what I'm gonna do Put a little mark here. And so now I've got a line here and here that I know where the window is going to be. So then I should be able to measure from here about 57 and a half. Do another one here. Another one here. Do some on the bottom. So that's 183. And then let's see if this lines up with any of them. It might not. Depends what the shape of this panel is. So that's it on the bottom three. Is it on the top? No. I'm going to reference from the top, I reckon. And I'm just sort of wondering whether I want to make it a bit more biased to this edge because I've got a kitchen going here and it'd be quite nice to get a little bit more natural light spilling into that. But then again, it would be quite nice to get more in the seat. Yeah, I reckon it might make more sense to bias it towards the back of the van because otherwise it's going to be tricky to look out that way in the van if you're in the kitchen area because there's no window behind it and you'll have to sort of come round here into the living area in order to do so. If you're in the living area already, you're probably going to be sat here, which you've got a clear view, or you're going to be sat there, which you'll still be able to look out the window. So I reckon... I reckon towards the kitchen. So I've just had a remeasure of everything and I've just realized that the overhang on the window is not 25 millimeters, it's 15, which is awesome because that means I can get the cutout closer to one of these ribs and not worry about the overhang intruding on one of the ribs. The other thing I've realized is that this line that I drew is not actually that accurate. I think I drew it a while ago when I was just sort of estimating things, but now I've got the window and now I can actually measure things. I've realized I can put that original line much higher and I'm going to measure things out, but I'm pretty sure that's still going to give me enough clearance before hitting this thing up here. So feeling pretty good about it. The other advantage to have here, blimey. The other advantage to having it slightly higher on the panel is that if I'm to mirror it on the other side, I can actually lift it slightly above this weird 45 degree notch in the bottom. Because if I was to have it down in the original position in here, it's going to start intruding on that. So by lifting it up, we should be able to get clear of it. I might have to reduce the width of the wooden frame slightly, but this is going to work. Apologies, that was quite a lot of talking for not a lot of action. Basically, the lesson to take from this is just, you know, measure as many times as you can. Preferably measure out all of the windows first before cutting the first one so you can be sure that the height and just the general layout of them is similar across the van because I can imagine the majority of people don't want misaligned windows along the length of their van. Of course, every time you grind back to bare metal, make sure to file all of the sharp edges and apply a primer. That way you're not gonna have any sort of rust issues sneak up on you in the future. All 
All right, so what we're going to do now is scribe the curvature of this panel onto the piece of plywood. This piece of plywood is as wide as the opening plus the thickness of the frame either side. Obviously, it's overhanging a little bit more at the bottom because we're hitting the top. So ideally, this would be central on here, but the curvature should be the same regardless of the offset. So we'll hold that flat on the panel and I've just taped a mechanical pencil to this bit of wood and keeping it perpendicular to the plywood. It's going to move it down like this. And that's going to transfer the scribe onto this piece of plywood. This template was then carefully cut out on the bandsaw, which could also be done using a jigsaw. So I've just hit it with a bit of sandpaper and that fits beautifully. So let's transfer that to the pieces. And once again, just a reminder here, this is a very unconventional way of installing this window. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I purchased the wrong one. If you want to use these windows and you're installing them in a panel van with curved edges like I am, make sure to buy the right windows that have the curve already manufactured into them. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of testing here to make sure the window will conform to the frame and also making sure it works fine with a little bit of a bend in it. Fortunately, it does, and so I proceeded with the original plan. But yeah, just, just make sure you do the right research and you buy the right window. Once that was all confirmed, the windows were assembled using dominoes and then left to dry in preparation for cleanup. And to help me get these windows installed quickly, efficiently, accurately and safely, I enlisted my dad for a bit of help. I think I measured this about five times yesterday. <laughs> As I did when fitting the skylights in the last video, I drilled out all of the corners using a smaller drill bit, then slowly expanded these until I reached the radius that I was looking for. We then took the template to the outside of the van, offered it up so that it covered all four of the holes. Yeah, it's sort of going to slightly overhang them because I didn't quite get to the corners. And then slightly angled so... it to match the exterior lines on the van as it would be much more obvious if they misaligned with these rather than any of the trim happening on the inside of the van, which was going to be covered it anyway. Once it was all marked out, I grabbed the jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and began cutting the outline of the window while my dad supported it from the inside to both prevent vibration and to prevent the offcut of the window falling on the inside of the van and scratching all the nicely painted surfaces that I prepared, or even worse, the outside of the van and doing exactly the same thing. Got it? Oh, is it still that top corner? <sighs> nice. That bloody killed. Yeah, that was, um... <laughs> Sort of iron spray. Did you get it as well? Yeah, well, only at the end there. Yeah. I then came back with a file to slightly soften and round the edges in preparation for priming. Please. Yes. That's easily going to conform, isn't it? We then got the outsides all masked off with about five millimeters or so exposed and then protected the edges using spray primer. some arctic camo going on. Once the primer had dried, we got the window back in position and marked the outline of it using masking tape once again. And this would establish a boundary for the adhesive primer that I'm going to be applying to the side of the van so that I get a much better bond with the Sikaflex. I don't like things that come in cans that look like that. It seems dangerous, isn't it? No effort for marketing or labeling or anything. I'd watched a few videos of professional installers putting windows in vans and most of them used this cotton swab thingy. So I grabbed one of those to apply the primer and it worked brilliantly. I was able to do the majority of it in just one pass. All right. Once that had all been applied, we removed the masking tape and began applying Sikaflex to the window. Okay, that is the top. I feel like I'm gonna use the whole thing of this per window. Let's see what happens. Uh, so yeah, I'll go on the inside. Yeah off that up yeah and then the screws should uh tighten against it <clears throat> yeah that pull it in yeah nice And with that, it was just a case of rinsing and repeating for the remaining three windows. And we got it down to about half an hour per install by the end of it. But just to recap, drill out the four corners from the inside of the van so that you can be sure you're going to avoid all of the internal trim. Once you've done that, 
go to the outside of the van, lay the template over the four holes and just sort of line it up with the exterior trim to make sure it looks like it's going to sit straight. Then once you've done that, get a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, cut the holes out, file the edges, protect them with some spray primer, apply a primer to the area that's going to be adhered, put a really thick bead of Sikaflex on the backside of the window so that it both sticks it in place and acts as a sealant to prevent water running in. Get your frame in position on the back and then tighten everything down. Make sure to set the torque settings on your drill so that you don't accidentally round the screws. Fortunately they're coarse enough to get a real good bite on them but it is definitely possible to go too far. If you follow all those steps, in my experience you'll get a pretty good result. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video please don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.